what I've called the presentation is from hair raising to family friendly, um, how Calgary built its cycle track network. Um, I was fortunate enough to be involved in this project uh, for a couple of years, uh, along with a lot of great people at the city of Calgary and, and other people that were on our consulting team too, and uh, some of which I see our attendees here, so hopefully uh, I speak well for all, all of the people that were involved in this project. Um, wanted to, to kick things off uh, with something um, just to kind of set the stage in terms of storytelling for, uh, um, and that's around the idea of a, a narrative fallacy. And what I wanted to recognize in, in this project in particular is that we've, um, we definitely set out this project with, with a goal in mind. Um, but when you go back and tell the story, um, it, it looks a lot different. So this is this image here kind of shows how how the project works. We're trying to head you know this direction. Um, you know there's a lot of different things that are thrown at us throughout the project, um, but we're always keeping this that little red dot in the, at the end. Uh, we're always trying to keep that in mind. The tricky part with with telling a story and going through an um, a narration like this is that when you tell the story, if you're not careful, it can look very, very much like everything was deliberate and everything lined up perfectly, and then you can take that story and apply it anywhere else. And that's not the case, obviously. So what I've tried to do within this within this presentation is to um, kind of follow follow this idea of a narrative fallacy, but focus on the different components of this project that were involved. So there was an engagement, education components, planning, design, a monitoring and evaluation component of the project, of, and, and a construction component, obviously, actually implementing the cycle track network in, in uh, downtown Calgary. So addressing all of these different components, hopefully we can, we can get past the idea of, of a narrative fallacy and just saying, this is how you do it, and this is how any, everyone should do it. But recognizing that each of these different components do have a goal in mind, uh, the, the engagement portion, we wanted to talk to people to get their values. Uh, the planning, we needed to pre uh, prepare a planning document that had, um, you know, that covered all the bases and that we were able to get improved, uh, get approved by council uh, eventually. Um, but it's all in the mind that we, we, we're not just trying to solve these little pockets of, of issues throughout the, the project, but we want to have people of all ages and abilities using the cycle track network uh, to live, work, and play, and learn within their city. So keeping that, that focus uh, on the end, and, and not that it's, it was, uh, we were just focusing on approvals, um, or making sure that we got a certain number of, of pamphlets out or talked to a certain number of people, we really wanted to make sure that we were keeping that end goal in mind. And another thing that I wanted to, to mention um, is this idea of, of a choice. When you're given a choice, you have to be very careful about what that choice is. And it's a little bit on language, actually, and, and how I think about transportation. So um, it might be a little bit of an aside, but you can probably see some of the themes come through on the presentation. Um, but, you know, is this guy, uh, is he a dad or is he an engineer? And is he a pedestrian or is he a motorist? Um, or a person walking or a person driving their car. And, and those two things, that's what comes up a lot when we're having discussions around um, projects that are uh, improve, improving a space for walking and biking, is that there's a certain type of group that is, that is associated with that mode, and that, that group is very, or is impermeable, and it doesn't include anyone else, and it's exclusive. So this project for the cycle track pro um, network downtown was about creating a network of cycle tracks in the downtown um, for people who may choose to ride their bike on the weekend, um, for people who may choose to ride their bike to go to work, for people who ch may choose to, to ride their bike to go to the, sc the schools that were in the area. Um, but those people were all, um, you know, the, the mode wasn't, wasn't the, um, the thing that defined them. It was the fact that they were people. So there's a bit of text here on the side that once you get the slide deck, you can, you can read through. Um, but it's about acknowledging the fact that there's ex exhaustive and exclusive uh, variables when you're talking about things, and that we need to be very clear about that when we're, we're dealing with walking and biking projects. All right, so a little bit about Calgary. 
there it is on a big map of Canada. So I saw that there's some folks um, from Stockholm. I think Blanca was, was there, um, but some friends from Europe as well that I noticed there too. So um, if I don't cover something off in the presentation, um, I'm totally willing to, to meet up for beers um, in, in your, your neck, neck of the woods to go over the, the project a bit more. But this is where Calgary is. Uh, we're in Alberta, in southern Alberta. It's a city of 1.2 million people. Um, it's often referred to as Cowtown or Stampede City. And that's our coat of arms, um, which shows that uh, one of the dates there is when we were incorporated as a city, which is 1894. Um, so not a very old city, um, quite young. Um, and the motto that's in that, mo um, in that emblem as well is onward, which I think is really, um, really fitting for this, this type of project, is that we're moving forward, we're very entrepreneurial um, and trying to, to get things done. We're also the home of the Calgary Flames, for those of you who follow, follow the NHL, and the Calgary Stampede, which is uh, a pretty awesome festival that happens during the summertime. Uh, everyone, uh, a lot of people take part. Um, it's, uh, you get to dress up with a cowboy hat and wear cowboy boots for, and jeans for a week at work, which is pretty awesome. Um, but it's also um, a really great uh, community and, and volunteer experience that actually happens throughout the year. Um, and that um, really kind of speaks to the nature of Calgary and how um, it is focused on, on community. And then a couple of bits. Um, purportedly were the, um, the originators of ginger beef and also of Caesars. I'm not sure how well those two go together, but there you go. Um, and the, the top left shows there uh, a picture of our pathway network within, the, within our city. Um, we have the most, um, most kilometers of pathways in, in North America. I think it's around, it's high hundreds, 800 kilometers or so. Um, I think I got that number, number wrong, but it's around that ballpark. Um, so we have a lot of recreational pathways, um, but not a lot of on-street facilities. And we do have winter, as shown in the top left, um, but we also have a, a, uh, an outdoor, um, outdoor lifestyle that folks get to take part in uh, during the summer months, um, including uh, rafting down the Bow River. And this is our city. So we are quite close to the Rocky Mountains, which are in the top part of your screen there. Um, but we do also spread out quite a bit. So um, our footprint is quite large, uh, but our downtown is quite concentrated. So that's also led to this project. In terms of the downtown and the con concentrated downtown, um, in terms of office and, and growing into more um, uh, residential uses as well, um, how do we move around this downtown area? Um, more efficiently and safely. And, and one thing that we do have um, set within our planning documents is that there's no more river crossings. So the Bow River there that you saw folks rafting in earlier, uh, that goes along the, the bottom part of your screen up to the top right. Um, and we're not going to be adding more river crossings across that space. Um, and we're not going to be widening our streets downtown either to accommodate vehicles um, because of the, the buildings in the way. So we can't be increasing the, the, the capacity of, of motor vehicles. So we had to look other, into other places in terms of uh, how we move people around our city. So to do that, um, a cycle track network was identified and, and asked for by council. Um, it was part of a, a, a larger cycling strategy that had 50-odd um, action items that were focused on, on creating um, you know, better better environment for uh, for cycling within the city of Calgary. Uh, so this was one of the the action points from that. So to look at a cycle track network within the downtown area, um, what you see here is basically the study area. Um, this is the the westernmost boundary of the study area, but it did uh, go further to the west even and along the south. So you see that we do have. Uh, to the north as well, the Bow River, again, like I mentioned, and that was the northern boundary of the, of the study area. But that's where our downtown sits, and we wanted to focus on how to create uh, better spaces for people to, to bike within the downtown area. And, you know, leaning on the ideas of, 
of the pathway network that everyone in Calgary is very familiar with and very comfortable with, um, on-street separated bike facilities or cycle tracks uh, were definitely what we were trying to, to achieve here um, and provide that same level of comfort for everyone. So we had 34 streets within our study area that we had to consider for a bike facility. That would be quite daunting, so what we did um, is that we broke these up into viable corridors. And so we had a series of east-west corridors and north-south corridors. Uh, in this area, it's a grid network, so that worked out quite well. Um, and so we had 10 viable corridors that were identified. Um, in particular, the north-south ones on the right-hand side of your screen um, are quite interesting uh, because there's a CP rail track that goes through the center of the city. Um, if you can follow my mouse, it goes right here. Um, if you can't, it's about halfway through your, those pictures. Um, but what that meant is that there was only a few opportunities for providing north-south connections um, to connect the, the belt line in the south to the downtown area to the north. So we had to be smart about how we identified these corridors in the north-south area and making sure that we could hit one of the underpasses that existed. So we had to define uh, what a cycle track was um, within our project, again, leaning on the idea that people understood what a, uh, the pathway network was like and, and that separation and that level of comfort that it provided you. So a cycle track is a bike lane that's protected from moving cars, by parked cars and sidewalks, and it can be raised from the roadway. That's what we were going with with the cycle track term. Um, not a velodrome, as we were asked in some of our engagement um, conversations, which is a track for bikes that go around in circles, and that's not what we were building downtown, and we had to kind of nip that in the bud early on in the project. So from those 10 corridors that we were looking at, um, there was a lot of, there was a multiple streets within each corridor, probably three or so streets within each corridor, and we had to figure out what street made the most sense in terms of providing a cycle track. So there was a level of analysis, which is that colored picture, oh, uh, which is that colored picture in the top left. Uh, we looked at, you know, the number of conflicts that would be occurring on the, from the different driveways, uh, the demand that that cycle track would serve, uh, cost and constructability, impact on other modes like motor vehicles, and then also the connectivity of that route and how well it connected to, say, the, the river pathway. There were lessons learned that we looked at um, from other places that we wanted to keep in mind. Um, one in particular was the idea of a two-way cycle track on a two-way street. Um, we know that can be done. We've seen those examples in Montreal. Um, but there, the, the design changes that would be required for that, um, in particular the signalization, was something that we were, were wanting to avoid as much as we could. Um, and also there were some, um, some legal um, issues around how a roadway is defined that was being brought forth and so the, that was something else that we had to deal with. So that was one of the lessons learned that we, we tried to steer, steer clear of that type of facility. We had on-site observations. We did a lot of that, um, looking at travel times and what different corridors made a lot of sense in terms of moving people um, by all modes and as well as parked vehicles too. That was a big consideration. And then we got uh, public feedback, um, asking them what matters to them. Um, and then that, all those work together into uh, a final recommendation for a, cor uh, a cycle track within a certain corridor. So these are the cycle tracks that we identified within the downtown, uh, downtown area. And, and what you can see here are the dark green lines are the existing, one is the existing 7th Street, 7th Street cycle track and one is a 11th Street bike lanes. Um, but what we were trying to do is connect the, the bike facilities um, to allow for good access within the downtown. And then the light green lines are the cycle tracks that were proposed. The orange is the shared space areas. And then this dotted line was on our, our plan as um, a desired corridor or recommended corridor to use. Um, but it was um, asked not to be a part of the, the pilot network. So this is how that, those streets fit within the downtown area. So what was, what was done for Calgary was a pilot network. Um, it was something that came about, uh, again, like when I was talking about how 
uh, keeping in mind the the narrative fallacy in that we can't just go from A to B and this, assume this story works everywhere. But we had planned this project to implement a single route at a time and move through every year or so, adding a, adding a route to this network that was identified. Um, early on in that, when we proposed our first route to be imp implemented, actually First Street Southeast, um, we came up against um, you know, people that didn't feel that that was a, either a good use of money, a good use of space, um, that the, the ridership would be very low and not just not good um, to be implementing within the city of Calgary. And that was at all levels, at the, the public level, um, I think some within administration, I, I know some of my colleagues even thought that it was a bit funny that we would have suggested that one, uh, just because it's not a very intuitive route um, unless you do the analysis like we had. And um, so to, to combat that, the, the, the rhetoric that was going around and kind of swirling around, around that street, um, a, a pilot network was, was recommended by our mayor. And, and what he was saying, as I understand it, was, you know, there's a lot of things that we can be saying about whether it makes sense to have a, a cycle track network within our downtown, but, you know, we're not going to be able to model this, we're not going to be able to analyze this to know whether, uh, how many people are going to be using this to, uh, to the number or to the person level. So what is a, what's a great way to figure out if people are going to use it is it to implement it on a short-term basis and, and pilot it, give it a shot. Um, try it out as an entire network because that's when you're really going to be seeing the benefits rather than implementing each route at a time and and then and monitor it so what we're what ended up happening is that a, a pilot cycle track network was was recommended and and it was for the entire network for a year and a half so we're just coming up to our, our second summer of the cycle track network being in place it was installed last last June um, and had kind of a partial summer of being implemented and now um, winter and now we're going into the next summer. You know, so, so some of the benefits of having a cycle track network, um, flexibility, um, and a, a, the ability to adjust and change your design, uh, which happened on the cycle tracks. I'll show you some pictures of that. Um, we wanted to have, make sure that we had the same function and safe, same safety as permanent. So we weren't um, just saying we're gonna do it really cheap and compromise on certain things. We wanted to have those aspects still there. The cost was less because of the types of materials that were used. Um, the entire network would be implemented, so that would see a benefit rather than just adding a, a route every every year, for example. And then it allows us time to measure and analyze um, what was happening. So the cycle track network that was proposed, it wasn't door-to-door -door service. Um, but what we did have was 88% coverage of within a two block walk to a cycle track. And, and so what we were able to show is that we weren't being, um, we weren't asking a lot. What we were asking for was a, a network that would connect us to, to really key destinations within the downtown area. Um, recognizing that First Street Southeast uh, played a really strong role in terms of connecting the both the rivers. Uh, we have the Elbow River and the Bow River. So that was a really great connection, and a lot of the concentration of, of downtown offices was in that area too. So we'd, we'd be hitting a lot of key destinations. And in terms of efficiency, again, that, not that we were asking a lot of, of it, but we wanted to quantify what we were, what the cycle track network would look like. So this was a, uh, something that we presented to council. Of the 296 kilometers of traffic lanes in our study area, so if you add up uh, a four-lane street for a kilometer would have four kilometers of, of traffic lanes. So of the 296 kilometers of traffic lanes, um, 7.3 kilometers of the four proposed cycle tracks um, would be there. Now this is including the First Street Southeast cycle track, which has, uh, which wasn't implemented, but that was, this was part of our, uh, of what we were presenting in our analysis. So that actually equated to about two and a half percent of the existing lanes are going to be used for a cycle track. So a very modest amount of the, the total uh, right-of-way space being used for, for this, these bicycle facilities. And then we also uh, had to de demonstrate how, you know, if we implemented something as a pilot, how that could change. Now, 9.38 million was uh, based on an estimate um, 
that was presented at council based on that level of analysis, that that number of 9.38 million has um, or w was a lot was reduced, um, and I'll show you what the costs were finally. But we did show, you know, making after making a decision, which is coming up this December, on how well that pilot did based on all the measures and um, evaluation that's done. Um, council can choose to either leave it as a pilot, it can convert it to a permanent, or they can remove everything if they choose, or ask administration to remove everything. And then with that, there's an associated cost with, with each of those, um, those options. So this was important to, to help kind of frame the story and also the idea of a pilot and you know, the, the total cost of what a pilot would be to make sure that we're very transparent. Uh, another component uh, that I want to highlight for the project was the engagement. And there was a ton of engagement that was done. And, and what this uh, really shows was that there, there were champions um, at every level that were being engaged with. Um, and that's really important for a project like this, having champions. You know, the mayor, there was counselors, um, there's people within administration, um, within the consulting team as well, um, and then also within the public and the advocacy groups. Um, there was, there's a lot of great people that were involved and it's, it's definitely about the team and kind of leveraging the, the team for to get this implemented. So the, some of the engagement aspects, uh, there were more than 90 presentations in a year to plan the network, and we wanted to do that with stakeholders. And plan and design the network too. So these are some of the ways that we were, we were doing it. We were going, doing info sessions. Uh, we, had, we were going to where people um, were, so you know, public displays either on our pathway network or within our downtown um, places where people would grab lunch. So trying to catch them um, just in passing. Um, we would have information sessions and special events where we would have speakers come in and, and present. Um, and then there was also the, uh, the CCBPC, as ev of course we called it, uh, but the Center City Bicycle Projects Committee. Um, so we did have different committees that were engaged with. Um, and I think one of our attendees, uh, Blanca, is standing right in the back there, um, presenting to to the, this committee. Uh, we also had feedback forms that we tried to get, um, get out there. It, was, it wasn't a scientific survey. Um, it was people self-selecting to fill out the forms, but we did, we did capture those and we tried to get them uh, throughout the city too. And from that, we were able to learn the, the values that the community had um, with respect to implementing a cycle track network. So focusing on connectivity and safety and accessibility was really important um, in terms of implementing this, this cycle track network. But like I mentioned before too, we were also able to engage people on the designs uh, that we were implementing. So this was an, one of the, our shared streets, so it's a pedestrian street within the downtown area and uh, as it worked out it was one of the streets that was identified to to have a, a bicycle facility or allow bicycling um, on the street. So there's a bit of a nuanced um, approach to this, right? It's a pedestrian only street, but actually bicycles were banned. And so that's what we were trying to change on this street. Um, we wanted to, to remove the, the bicycle ban so that all throughout the day, people were able to ride their bicycle um, rather than just the times, uh, I think it was in the evening that they were allowed or permitted. And we wanted to allow for two-way bicycle. Um, activity to occur too. So uh, we engaged with people and we mocked it up. This is uh, a mock-up of some gates that exist on the street. Currently they exist because they want to block uh, motor vehicle traffic during the day and have it as a walking only street. Um, but these street, the, the gates that currently existed are, were really big and long and, and served more of as a, a barrier, um, a barrier to vehicles but also a barrier to people walking and bicycling. So what we were wanting to do is design uh, a better gate. And so we mocked this up and what we have here is a, our better gate mocked up. And someone through the, this exercise said, hey, why don't you stagger those gates so that you can get a vehicle through, um, but then it also gives you a lot more space. So we were able to test that out. And actually we're able to, to implement that then in the final design and use the, that feedback um, in terms of when, how we implemented the network. So these are a picture of our, our better gates. And we were able to stagger them and space them appropriately 
Um, but that was all through feedback that we received. So just one example of how we incorporated feedback, not just for the, the, the community's values and vision, um, but also in terms of getting stuff done and, and implemented on the street. Uh, we also, um, as I mentioned earlier, the one of the streets that we had pr proposed was uh, First Street Southeast, and that was going to be how we were going to add to the network and add different components to the network. Um, when we did that, we did meet people that did not think that that was a, a good use of the street and were concerned about accessibility issues or, or walking issues. Um, this picture here says, uh, the lady sign says, don't take away roads from my community. Um, so people had a concern about that. So we did, we still met with them and we, we wanted to talk with them. We had, um, you know, an info session, like as shown in the bottom right with these, with, with the people that were concerned, but we also had one-on-one -on -one meetings. And we wanted to be able to, to work with them. Um, even though they weren't uh, for the project, we still wanted to get what they were, um, you know, what they valued and what they were concerned about uh, incorporated into our project. So that was another voice that was still really important to hear. And this is one of the really cool things that uh, we were able to see, and it's the Calgarians for the cycle tracks. Um, and it was a, a photo campaign that was done by some pretty awesome Calgarians, um, some of them on the line, I think, um, about how uh, you know businesses and their support for having uh, bicycle access to their to their businesses, which were in the area. So you, there was this sign, and you could hold it up and have your picture taken and posted to to Facebook. Um, you could also put the sign in your in your uh, the, the window of your store, and and show your support. And this really helped, uh, especially with the, the business community and having that voice um, involved was really good in terms of making the case um, for having um, better access for people into the downtown, not just for, for a certain mode. So the design and construction, um, as much as this was a bicycle project, um, it was very focused on making sure that all modes uh, within the downtown were accommodated and this is a picture of, of the downtown area um, in terms of motor vehicle traffic and the level of service that would be provided to this motor vehicle traffic um, if a lane was taken away from that street and for instance for a cycle track. So this was analysis that was done um, and, and quite powerful in terms of determining which of the cycle tracks, uh, which streets would be would be viable for a cycle track to be implemented on, and parking as well. So we wanted to, uh, we knew that by taking space away um, on the street, sometimes that space was being used for for on street parking. So we needed to make sure that we were keeping that keeping that in mind and that managing that. So in actuality, more parking was in, um, provided. Um, so we took away 400 parking stalls, but ended up putting back 500 parking stalls, which is which is awesome, and, and just goes to show um, the dedication that was done within the administration of of getting and looking at this problem and trying to solve and figure out uh, you know places where where parking could be added and, and people's concerns be be met. So in the end, six and a half kilometers of bike infrastructure were designed and constructed to create a network in the downtown core. So this is a picture of one of the, the streets in the downtown. Uh, you can see here that there is parked vehicles along the, the barrier, um, and it uh, did take away, or it shifted basically, that, that those parked vehicles into the street and took a, a lane and for the cycle track. And 43 intersections were studied and modified in order to accommodate these new facilities, uh, which is huge and takes a, a lot of effort from a really great team within the, the roads department of the city of Calgary to look at the, the intersections and how the signals could be um, modified and adjusted. Um, and in some cases, we needed brand new signals to be included, so how those could be done um, quickly and um, with lower cost. And three different bicycle treatments were then created, uh, were used to create the network on four different downtown streets. So a two-way cycle track on a one-way street, a one-way cycle track on a two-way street, and we added an integration of slow-moving bicycles on a pedestrian street. So what I want to show you right now, oh, uh, 
this was this image is something that we use to 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 show the different costs and and help justify the costs. Um, you know, in the end, it cost 5.75 million dollars for the six and a half kilometers. Um, but making it very clear and transparent in terms of where all these costs were assigned to within building a network was really important to the decision makers. So we showed 5% was to intersection and conflict zone markings um, based on those the estimates that were done at the time. And we went through the different different elements of the, the network that we would be implementing and, and showing what would cost, what the cost would be. So here's some before and after. So this is one of the streets, 12th Avenue. It was a one-way street. Um, it was four lanes actually in um, in the uh, east direction, eastbound direction. Uh, one of the nice things about a four-way street, uh, four-way one, four-lane one-way street, is that if you take away a lane, um, it's only 25% of that capacity uh, for moving vehicles theoretically. Um, whereas if it was two lanes moving in opposite directions, uh, moving those away, um, sorry, I just finger two, uh, you know, moving those away, you would have uh, one traveling in either direction, but you're actually losing 50% of the, the capacity for moving people, um, or, or parking would be lost, and we had to do that in one street. So this is the after shot for 12th Avenue. Fifth Street, this is one of the underpasses under the CP rail. Uh, four lanes again in a one-way direction. And then we added a bike facility on the east side, a two-way bike facility. This is 8th Avenue. So it's going in both directions, east and west. Um, and there was on-street parking. You can see the, the hints of a, of a Shero um, by that SUV. Um, so not really cutting it in terms of the comfort that we were trying to hit, hit at. Um, but it was a, a facility in the downtown, and what we changed it to um, was a, a protective facility. So again, managing the uh, the parking in places where we could and where the 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 right of way allowed us. Um, one thing I should mention too is that we were trying because it's a pilot, we needed to minimize the cost, and so we weren't moving curbs to to implement these bikes bike facilities. So we had to we wanted to stay within the curb line and work within the space that was provided there. So that meant for some uh, some really interesting design uh, challenges and, and opportunities. And then uh, this is Stephen Avenue. So this is the, the downtown cycle track, uh, downtown bike facility, but that shared space area, shared street, before and after. So very minimal changes. The change, we changed the gates, like I mentioned earlier, um, and added some stencils uh, some shares on the ground. Um, that was mostly because of the the evening time. Uh, vehicles were allowed onto this street, so we had to be very clear um, and address um, you know legal and liability issues. And then Eighth Eighth Avenue um, further further east. Um, again, two way. Uh, motor vehicle traffic, and then two cycle tracks on either side. And in this picture is really interesting because it shows what uh, the pilot allows us. You can see um, two parallel lines um, that are kind of ground out of the road. Um, that used to be where the buffer for the cycle track was, um, but that was changed um, based on feedback that was heard from the adjacent businesses here because before there wasn't any parking allowed on this street. And so they were... The, they were willing to see what it was like uh, without the parking when it was first implemented. Um, the city was in touch with them and they said, you know, we really want need the parking to occur here. Um, let's put it back on here. What, how do we get parking to occur on our street? So that's when, you know, it's the, the uh, confines of our, what we had created for our design vehicles and, and all our design considerations, um, we had to work around those and kind of shrink those down and, and make make adjustments to the like the width of the the cycle track also the width of the the motor vehicle lane and the parking lane in order to be able to fit that parking in place so a really cool example of of how you can uh, be nimble in your design and, and address some of those concerns on the go a really great education program that was implemented from the city um, you know there's online components in terms of getting people involved 
um, some pamphlets that were really clear about telling people um, whether they were driving, cycling, or walking, how the, this new network and this new mode, uh, mostly in how this new network was going to be functioning within the city and what they had to be uh, mindful of. Uh, so very clear uh, description of how all that should work. And some information too on that Stephen Avenue shared space. And then uh, I should also mention too that these pamphlets that were produced um, together, you know, it wasn't just pushing things out online. It was about being on the street as well and talking to people. Um, so there were ambassadors that were on the street um, on corners of intersections talking to people as they were walking or biking in the area if they had any questions about how to use a, a particular uh, bicycle treatment. Uh, you know, two-stage uh, bike boxes were used uh, for the design, so how do how do those work? And they're not, um, they're, they're really weird when you haven't seen them uh, before, so how do you work around that and how do you get people to understand how to use those? Uh, so that, that was huge in order to have those people uh, talk about that. And then because it was a pilot, the, the monitoring of the, of the network and being able to articulate what the, the value is and, and if it's having an effect and, and what those effects are. Um, so that was a major component. So there was performance measures that were proposed um, when this was all being done as a pilot uh, in terms of safety. So the number of collision reports um, or mapping uh, or 311 calls, for example, of all different modes, pedestrian, cyclists, or motorists. Um, you know, how, how well the walking, cycling, and automobile activities were occurring still in the downtown. We weren't, we weren't, we wanted to be able to show, um, or people, the counselors wanted to know whether travel times were affected, whether well, there was gridlock that was occurring all of a sudden. Um, you know, what was the parking, the intercept interviews in terms of how people are moving around the city, um, daily volumes, and then also sidewalk bicycle riding. Uh, asking people how they perceive uh, the downtown and whether they're satisfied with that. So questions were included within the satisfaction survey that the city completes um, and also monitoring 311 calls. And then also keeping in mind um, or watching who are the people that are, are using the, the bike facilities. So the gender, age, um, you know, are they traveling with kids in a trailer or in child seats and or are they athletic? people still wearing spandex, or are they people that are dressed in their regular clothing just going to work? And there was also uh, a, some on-site monitoring that's occurring. So this is one of the, the counters that's uh, on the, in the downtown cycle track network, um, just monitoring the, the overall usage on the bottom number and then that daily usage. So you see these totems um, in a ton of different places and so there's a few of those located within Calgary too, as well as a, a really great online tool to be able to check the, the data and that daily data or monthly or yearly data that's being collected on a bunch of different locations in the downtown. This is another example of a totem, which is a great place to uh, pose your kids in front of and get a shot of them too. Uh, this is uh, an infographic that was created by the city of Calgary uh, in the fall last year, um, just reporting kind of some of the quick um, observations and, and results of the, the data that was collected. Uh, so some things to, fo to, to point out here, um, the council had originally approved $7.1 million for the um, implementation of the network and uh, the pilot cost was under budget, which is always great and, and earlier on time and it was at $5.75 million. Um, a net cr increase, like I had mentioned earlier, about of 130 um, new parking stalls that were created within the downtown, um, which is, you know, a, just a nice thing to be able to say that, you know, we took away a lot, but we were also able to, to move and manipulate some certain streets in order to, to have uh, those concerns addressed. Um, and 64% of Calgarians support the cycle track pilot and the telephone survey that was conducted. Um, and overall, there were almost 400,000 bicycle trips. Uh, the city also was looking at how uh, people, um, how their experience changed within, 
the traveling in the downtown. So if you were a motorist, if you were walking, or if you're biking, how how yeah how your your experience changed? If it got better, the same, worse, um, or if you know did you prefer to travel on the cycle track, which you could see a massive increase or a massive percentage of people riding their bikes. 75% preferred to tra travel on the cycle tracks. Um, so getting those, those, that level of satisfaction and those, um, well, being able to quantify this um, has, been, has been really important in terms of telling this story. And here's some shots uh, just using Strava, the 2014 to 2015 comparison um, of what bicycling um, for people who chose to use the Strava app um, what it looked like in the downtown. Uh, what you can see right now is it's pretty fuzzy. That's, wh that's where the cycle track network exists. Um, not a lot of definition, and in, fact, in, in actuality, um, you know, 10th Avenue, for example, was it was a quieter street, and it did have some sort of uh, bike facility on it as well. So that was the that was one of the better bike facilities. But within the the implementation of the cycle track network. Um, you can see a lot more concentration of bicycle activity happening on the cycle track streets, um, especially within uh, the Beltline area. So east-west here, this is the train tracks. Um, the south corridor going east-west, though, that's 12th Avenue, and that's within the Beltline, which is a really densely populated area, um, and very vibrant. And you know, between 12th Avenue and 5th Street, there's some uh, massive in in uptick in people riding their bicycles. And then also quantifying that data. So this is uh, counts that the city of Calgary put together, monitoring their bicycle usage. So again, these those are the the bicycle or the cycle tracks streets um, before anything was implemented, and then this is afterwards. So seeing some really big changes in in usage. This screen grab on the left is an example of the online data that's available. Uh, but I did want to acknowledge the fact that winter does occur in, in Calgary, obviously. Um, and But what we see is about a 25% to 30% decline in the winter. Um, when talking to other winter cities, um, what we've heard is that you know their winter retention could be around 10 to 20%. Uh, so Calgary actually does a really good job of retaining um, winter riders, and in part it's because of the, the winter maintenance that's done and making sure that uh, bicycle facilities are, are given priority and uh, snow removal occurs. Um, but we also dealt with it within the design too and considering the, the space that's provided for the buffer and using that as a, a potential area for snow storage. So when I was talking about uh, the narrative fallacy at the beginning, um, it was about keeping in mind what the, the end goal is. And our end goal was to make sure that we had a bicycle network created that all ages and abilities felt comfortable using um, for all types of trip purposes. So all ages, all abilities, uh, all purposes. And so these are some shots of, of what we were kind of thinking of uh, when we we're going through the planning process and then the design and implementation. Um, all those aspects. Um, and it's actually what's... Uh, what's manifested itself now because of these these facilities that are are comfortable so this is a family traveling uh, through an under uh, an otherwise very um, could have been a hot or would have been a hostile environment um, but now kids that um, are maybe six or seven are able to, to ride within the street um, big groups of, of people or, or school groups traveling through the downtown area on bicycle um, are showing up. People just using it um, to move around um, for their work trips, uh, for their school trips, going to the library, um, just getting around their downtown area and getting to the to the great amenities that we do have, um, like the river network um, is showing up. And our streets are becoming um, more complete and that space is being used uh, more equitably for everyone. And then accessibility-wise, too, obviously, um, we're allowing for that within the network, um, but people are still using it, and people have better access to their city.
uh, the news is picking up on it too and, and starting to see um, they're reporting a lot of the usage that's in, that's occurring um, and how those it, it, some, it used to be very surprising that anyone would be using these facilities um, but now it's the, the more of the story is um, wow look how many are using this story are you're using these facilities and moving around their city um, and so that's been really nice to see it's, it's not a stupid project it makes a lot of sense and actually people are using and and how great these are um, and here's some uh, some quotes from people that were interviewed using the street um, I particularly like the one um, up at the top here it's busy which I think is fabulous said Jordan Hamilton um, who is out cycling with his four-year-old son on Wednesday uh, so it's just becoming a, a daily place, which is pretty cool to see so to wrap um, just wanted to leave some of the big picture and big ideas that we had been thinking about um, and kind of realize are, are really fundamental. So thinking about what's the point, what's the purpose, um, that really helps uh, not just navigate um, projects, but anything that has to do with complexity um, and and keeping what that end purpose in mind um, will really help drive you to the to the right spot. Making something nimble um, so that you can learn and adapt to the new new behavior that you see. Um, on a few occasions, the design um, had to be changed. So what designs that would have typically been used in other places, um, we observations were made and it wasn't really working out. So we're because of the way that this was constructed, we were able to change the design um, relatively quickly. We didn't have to rip out concrete or anything like that. So keeping things nimble was really uh, was really important. Um, it was definitely a team uh, that approached this. And that, and that made it happen. Uh, these are just some shots of the team that were involved, but it, there was a ton of people involved. Um, and they all kept that, that final purpose in mind in terms of getting it done. Um, measure your projects so that you can articulate the quantifiable value that you're seeing. Um, really having those numbers was, is important to, to be able to help tell your story and justify your story. Um, and it's not just about what we should be doing. Um, which is very important to, to be able to talk about, but some people need more than what we should be doing and they need numbers to be able to make their decisions and so being able to provide these measurements is key. And then being able to tell stories and telling stories like I traveled with my, with my daughter in the downtown um, to, to go do something. I was able to get a better seat for the Stampede Parade um, and it was right beside those green flexi posts, and man, that was cool. Um, that those cycle tracks are great parade buffers um, as well. Um, but in, one of the stories that really sticks in my mind um, in terms of why we're doing this, uh, this is at an intersection that uh, a colleague of mine uh, we were we were standing at uh, because we recognized someone on the corner, and so we we stopped and said hello as we were traveling by bike along the cycle track. And uh, so we stopped and said hi, and we chatted how things are going, and, and then um, then someone else showed up, and that person left the, that we were originally talking to, and someone else showed up, and we started talking to them, and then someone else showed up, and then uh, a counselor's assistant uh, stopped by and said hello, and uh, fortunately we weren't in a time crunch, but it was an hour and a half um, after we had stopped that we were finally moving along. Um, so in my mind this really speaks to the idea how um, you know streets are for people and for people to be able to to communicate and these cycle tracks have, have added a, a massive human amount of human scale to our downtown areas. So thanks for your attention and I'd be happy to answer any questions.